Today I'm taking a look at the JJRC H31 quadcopter which has been sent in for review by Banggood.com. Essentially it's a summer beach toy branded as being waterproof. The idea is that you take this along with you to the pool or beach in the summer and the manufacturer is giving you permission to fly it near or in water. The thing is though, looking close at it, I can't see any actual waterproofing on the frame itself. It looks like your usual geared quadcopter. I can see the motors through the top and I can't see any seal on the body or battery bay. That being said, I can't see if the motors are airtight so that could be the case and perhaps the flight controller has been treated as well. What I think has actually happened here is that because this quadcopter will float in water, even though the electronics don't seem to be sealed or protected, it should be okay in water, the same as any other geared quadcopter would be if it floated. My biggest worry is the battery. It sits underneath and without it being sealed, dunking the quad in water will submerge the battery, which is never a good idea. Also, if the quadcopter sinks completely, radio signals will not penetrate through water and you will lose control. So if the pool or sea or pond or whatever is deep, you will definitely be losing this quadcopter. Before I go and test that, let's see what you get in the box. The quadcopter comes in green or white colours. It's pretty lightweight at around 75 grams. It could lift a small FPV camera no problem and maybe an 80816. There's also a camera power outlet underneath as well. As far as I'm aware, there is no camera version available yet. There is a battery door, which as I mentioned does not seem to be waterproofed in any way. The battery connector is a micro lossy connector and the LiPo is a 400mAh one cell. You are given an on and off switch and there are four LED lights. The lights are not very bright though so I imagine they will be hard to see in daylight but fine in the dark. This could be a problem if you're flying around water and want to know when the battery is about to run out. The gears are visible from underneath, so I will have to see if they get caught up in the water. Also in the box you are given some landing legs, a screwdriver, prop guards and screws, a spare set of props, and according to the box these should be pretty much unbreakable. You can bend them all the way over without them being damaged, which is going to make it very good for playing about with. The body is made of plastic, but it's rugged and lightweight, so it's going to be able to take a few hits. I think this is a first for a quadcopter, but you are given a pair of sunglasses. I think reiterating the fact that this quad is intended for summer use. I wear prescription sunglasses, so unfortunately I won't be able to enjoy them to their full potential. <laughs> Lastly, we have the transmitter. It comes in mode 2 only. There's no altitude hold on this quad, which is pretty rare, especially this year. The transmitter takes four AA batteries. There's these dummy potentiometers at the top of the transmitter. They are not connected to anything, so I'm not sure why they are there. The left hand shoulder button is the rate button. You are given three in total, low, medium, and super high. The right shoulder is the flip button. The rest of the buttons are the trims except for the rudder trim. A press to the right turns on headless mode and a press to the left turns it off. Another press to the left will turn on one key return. I've started calling it one key return because it kind of does give you a one key return. Now if you are a beginner, please avoid using any of these modes. One key return never works correctly and headless mode is really bad for learning. This quad does have a use for headless mode, however, as in its high rate, it's got a ridiculous yaw rate, so you can at least use the headless mode to retain control while doing crazy yaw stunts. It's my opinion that headless mode should only be used in these situations rather than relying on it for training. So let's go and take it for a fly. So I don't live near a beach or a swimming pool. In fact, I don't think I could be any further away from one. However, I do have this pond very close to me. I spent a lot of time here as a child. So let's see if this thing can handle some water. Let's go for a takeoff. Got some ducks out there. See how they find the drone. I don't think they're going to like it very much. This thing flies so smooth. 
This is the first time I've ever flown anything over water. <laughs> There's a lot of trees around here, which I'm a bit scared of. And I'm flying a mode two, which isn't my native mode, but there you go. Let's first of all see how it handles flips. Wow, pretty snappy. Did it gain any height there? Oh, these ducks aren't too afraid of the quadcopter now. Let's try again. Whoa, yeah, it does drift a little bit after it's performed a flip. But you know what? It flies really nice. Do I dare do some uh, nose in? Probably shouldn't. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a nice shot there. I want to fly it a little bit before I dunk it in the water because I'm not sure if it's going to come out. But you know, if you take away the gimmick of it being waterproof, this thing is actually a really nice flyer. I think these ducks are expecting some food off me. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? If you could attach some bread to the drone and drop it for the ducks. <laughs> They're not too afraid of it, but <laughs> don't worry ducks, I'm not going to harm you. Oh, I think it's time to dunk it in some water. I'm going to do it close first of all, see how that goes. Are you ready? It floats! <laughs> I'm not sure it liked that too much, you know. I didn't think it was going to come out there. There was a little bit of a delay from when it throttled up. You see, when it floats, the battery bait is completely dunked in. Not too sure about that. And it's also left sort of... You see that? It's left something in the water there. What is that? Is that just where it upset the water? Let's try again. Let's get it in the water. Let's get it a bit closer. Props completely stopped, it does float. You see that? That was strange, it didn't take off, but then it did. Try again, look, it's dripping water out of that battery bay. I still have control. Feels okay. Let's try again. And I'm going to show you what the transmitter's doing. Get it in the water. So it's floating. Hold the transmitter up there. Look at that. I think. That might just be the, yeah, it's just the flight controller there, me not applying enough throttle. Look, these ducks are not giving up. They really think that I got some food. Look at that, there is water coming out of the battery bay. That's never a good thing. Okay, let's play a bit more in the water because that's what this thing is for. Keep the props going this time. sort of can just hover above the water which is cool I suppose the resistance of the water means that you don't have to have full power on to get it into a hover I mean it does seem to be fine in the water I've got full control I guess you'd really have to just dunk it in and hold it down for a while to see if it was fully waterproof. But as I say, because it floats, it's fine. And I throttle up there. Yeah, no problem. It actually does get a little bit heavier and it does affect the amount of power that you have because it fills up with water slightly. So I'm finding that, yeah, there's less punch when it's full up of water. Also, there's going to be an LVC kicking in, and I cannot see those LEDs at all. Okay, let's see if I can just completely come off the throttle and let it land in the water. 
Ready? Splash. <laughs> the ducks think that like some sort of food has landed there. Oh, look at that. I don't have any throttle there. Oh, now I do. That was weird. That's weird. Look at that. Let's have a look what's happened there. Yeah, completely filled with water. And if you leave it in the water for a while, looks like it's not completely floating. Look at that. It actually, when it fills up with water, it doesn't float. I've seen other reviewers review this and they say that it doesn't float. It does initially, but if it fills up with water, like it has done here, then it does sink. So it looks like when you dunk it in the water, whoa, it nearly flew off then. Yeah, so waterproof, I would say not. Water resistant, kind of because it floats, but don't go dunking this in water. Don't go fly it out to the middle of the pond and then dunk it in the water, cut the throttle because that is gonna sink eventually. So just in the water is fine. But look, I think now because it's inundated with water, that is sinking. It's sinking. And that is completely dunked in water there. That entire thing is underwater. So let's see <laughs> if it will still fly. I'm not sure it will, you know. Oh, it is flying, but it is very heavy. I think the battery has gone, you know. Yeah, I think, are those lights flashing? Yeah, the lights are flashing. Here you go, duckies. Yeah. Make sure you'll get some. Oh, there's loads of them. Quack, quack, quack. It's okay, I got enough for all of you. Maybe I don't. This guys keep having them all. Let's see if I can truly drown this thing. Why not? For the sake of science. Let's just check out that crazy yaw. Oh, that is crazy. That is nuts. Water dunking time. Let's see how long before it sinks. Not long at all. Don't go out there. Yeah, it doesn't take long to sink at all. And I imagine no power, you see, either because it's inundated with water and no longer works, or the control just cannot get through the water, no matter how close. I got a few stories about this pond. My friend's brother, when he was younger, built a rope swing up there and he fell off it and his arm landed on that wooden ledge there, completely broke his arm. When I was a kid, I used to wade across here, like in the summer, the level would go down and you could wade across this little island in the middle. I'd also catch fish in here and tadpoles. There's carp in here and there's also pike in here as well, I think perch, although there used to be. I can't see any here at the moment, so I don't know if there's still fish in here, but there used to be. I haven't seen anyone fishing here for a long time, but I used to do it a lot as a kid. Never caught anything. Used to come here with a net, scoop little grubs out, you know. Not sure if kids still do that these days with the internet and everything. It's certainly been a long time since I came here. Still some bread there, guys. What are you doing? Let's see if the lights are still on. Lights are still on. It still works. <laughs> Back you go. Let's 
soon as it touches the water, nothing. You see that? It's like oil coming out of the motors. That's what that mark was in the water. Is the oil from the motors or something? Maybe something they put on the motors to waterproof it. I don't know. Well, that's been in there for a good few minutes now. The light's still working. Look how those props bend. It's just ridiculous. Boink, boink. Let's see if it still flies. It does still fly. <laughs> wow. It seems that it is waterproof. Or at least, you know, it can take a good amount of water. It's just that when it goes underneath the water, you're not going to have any control. When it starts to sink, no control at all because the radio frequency cannot penetrate through the water at all. So there you go, that is my review of the JJRC H31 quadcopter. Waterproof? It seems, yes it is. I did dunk it for a few minutes there and there was no problems at all. Of course, you can't control it once it starts to sink. So it does sink after just a few seconds, so be careful of that. But as always, thanks so much for watching this video. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.